This vacation house is only for my mom and dad. Your parents can't stay here, my husband declared, surprising me with his words after buying a fancy vacation house worth a million dollars. So that's what this is all about. I realized his intentions and felt fed up. Okay, but you'll regret this decision. I warned him. Never come near me again, Terry smirked, folding his arms. If that's how it is, I won't be nice either. I'll make him sorry. My name's Kathy. I married Robert four years ago and we've been living together happily. We don't really have any hobbies, so we've been saving a lot of money. If I had to pick one thing we splurge on, it's probably making fancy coffee on weekends. Oh, by the way, isn't your mom's birthday coming up soon? I asked Robert while holding a freshly brewed cup of coffee. We're both in our mid-thirties. Robert's parents just turned 60 this year, a year before mine. What if we give them a spa getaway as a birthday gift? It could be a lovely treat, don't you think? I suggested. Robert thought it was a good idea, saying that sounds nice. I'll check with my parents if they have any specific wishes. If not, we'll go with the spa retreat. It's like hitting two birds with one stone. I didn't mean it that way, I clarified. I know, I'm just kidding. Next time I see my parents, I'll bring it up with them. Kathy, can you find some good spas? Robert asked me. Sure thing. How about we join them on the trip? It'd be a nice change, I suggested. Two weeks went by, and my mother-in-law's birthday was approaching quickly. We should book the spa soon. Otherwise, we might not make it in time for my father-in-law's birthday. Did you talk to your parents? I asked anxiously. My husband replied casually. Oh, I forgot to mention. I already checked with them, so no need to book the spa retreat. Oh, really? That's a relief. But what did they say they wanted? I was eager to decide the gift together, but my husband seemed bothered by the question. I'll take care of it. It's my parents' 60th birthday. You don't have to worry about it, Kathy, he said, dismissing my involvement. Robert's words took me aback. He'd never dismissed me like this before. That wasn't very nice, I said, feeling emotional. Why won't you tell me? We've always chosen gifts together. We've even picked gifts for each other's parents in the past. So why, on such an important occasion like their 60th birthday, would you shut me out like this? I don't understand, I said, frustration creeping in. Normally I'm pretty calm and don't raise my voice often, but my husband remains stubborn. In the end, he wouldn't budge on telling me what his parents wanted. Since then, there's been tension between us, and we only talk about necessary things. Even when we drink our morning coffee, the silence hangs heavy. The day before my mother-in-law's birthday, my husband finally spoke to me after a long silence. We're going out tomorrow to celebrate Mom's sixth day. Get ready, Kathy. We're staying overnight, so be prepared, he informed me. When he sprung the news on me, I panicked. What? Where are we going? You should have told me earlier if we're staying overnight. I need time to prepare. I just told you, didn't I? You're going to be surprised, my husband replied cheerfully, contrasting my anxiety. The next morning, we hopped into the car early to pick up my in-laws. They were bursting with excitement from the moment we saw them. I'm so thrilled. I never imagined celebrating my birthday like this. Thank you so much, they exclaimed. Isn't it wonderful? My husband asked. Absolutely, thank you so much, Robert. I replied, feeling a bit awkward since I hadn't been part of choosing the gift. Even when my in-laws expressed their gratitude, I could only respond vaguely. Then, unexpectedly, my husband spoke up. It's all thanks to Kathy. Thank you, he said, supporting me. I was touched by his consideration. Despite our recent disagreements, it felt like we were getting back to our old selves. My mood lifted, and I decided to enjoy the journey to our destination. We arrived at a beautiful cabin nestled in the woods. The entrance was spacious, and the living room had huge glass windows, giving it a charming appeal. Surrounded by trees, the cabin felt like it blended perfectly with nature. There were three bedrooms and even a hot tub in the bathroom. This is where we're staying. It's so beautiful, I said excitedly to my husband, expressing regret for my earlier attitude. I never imagined Robert would pick such an amazing place. I don't think I could have found such a gem myself. Trusting Robert with a decision was definitely the right call. I'm sorry for being so cranky lately, I admitted feeling a surge of excitement as I took in the beauty of the cabin. Then, out of the blue, my husband said something unexpected. It's no big deal. If it were just me, I wouldn't have been able to afford this cabin. It's all thanks to Kathy that we have it. What? I was suddenly speechless. 
As my mind raced with questions, my in-laws chimed in. Thank you, Kathy. We never expected such a wonderful gift, did we? We were thinking about getting a new place for ourselves when we turned 60, even considering living together. But remember, we decided against that, right? So we thought a cabin would be perfect, and we've been discussing it with Robert since he got married. It was true that I turned down the idea of living together once. I wanted to savor our time as a couple, and my in-laws were still healthy, so I felt it was too soon for us to move in together. Robert agreed, and we decided we'd move in together when my in-laws needed assistance. But I never expected them to request a new home as a gift for their 60th birthday, let alone a cabin. That felt like a bit much. Trying to keep my panic at bay, I turned to my husband. Robert, you're kidding, right? There's no way we could afford such a beautiful cabin. Why spring a surprise on me? It's your mom's birthday. The surprise should be for her. It's not a joke. We really bought this cabin, my husband replied. Everything seemed to blur before my eyes. In a daze, I heard him continue. It was a lifesaver, really. They said I couldn't get a mortgage based on my income alone. Getting a joint mortgage was the right call. Wait a minute. I had no idea about any of this, I exclaimed. And it's not fair to just spring it on me like this. You just said it was a lovely cabin. It's ours. That's not the point. How much did this vacation home cost? I vented my frustration at him, and he dropped a bombshell. One million. What? A million dollars? And you spent it on my parents' sixth day of birthday? I couldn't believe it. The amount was staggering, leaving me reeling. To make matters worse, my husband revealed another shocking fact. We couldn't get a loan for a million-dollar property in both our names, so I used all our savings since we got married, the joint account, as a down payment, he admitted. What? At this point, I was beyond shocked and simply speechless. How could he make such a selfish decision without even consulting me? I couldn't comprehend it at all. Despite my disbelief, my husband continued casually, Well, it's done now. There's no going back. And I did take your preference of not living together into account didn't I? With this vacation home, we can do whatever we want. Our vacations will be even better, right? His nonchalant attitude was incredibly frustrating. But now that it's done, there's no going back, Robert said, echoing my own thoughts. The vacation home was undeniably beautiful, and it would certainly enhance our holiday experiences. Fine, it's already done, so there's no point dwelling on it. But you should have at least talked to me about it, I said with a sigh. Surprisingly, my husband's mood lifted, and he chuckled. You're right. I should have consulted you. I'm sorry. I wanted it to be a surprise for you too, Kathy. You're something else. Learning that Robert had taken out a joint mortgage without telling me, even using our shared savings, was a shock. Let's just accept it and see it as a good investment, I decided. With that resolution, I chose to enjoy the lavish celebration for my mother-in-law's birthday and our two-day stay at the villa. As I brewed a cup of coffee, I found myself lost in memories of our time at the villa. Despite the initial shock, it truly was a magnificent place. The wood-burning stove in the living room especially stood out, promising cozy winter evenings. Feeling content, I turned to Robert. Hey, when can we go back to the villa? I want to pick out some new dishes for it. Yeah, I'll ask my parents about it, he replied. Can't we just go by ourselves? I suggested. Technically, the villa is in our names, even though it was a gift for my parents' 60th anniversary. It wouldn't be right if they already had plans, would it? A sense of unease crept over me. Despite being in our names, I worried that practically it might end up being more like my in-law's property. Thinking fast, I propose, since it's our villa, can't we invite my parents to join us too? Yeah, if they're free, he replied vaguely, but at least he didn't outright refuse. That was a relief. It meant the villa wouldn't just become my in-law's property. However, my optimism was short-lived. For the past six months, I hadn't been allowed to spend the night at the villa. I could visit during the day, drop off my in-laws, prepare food, and then head back home, only to return the next day to pick them up, clean up, and drive them back. This routine had persisted despite my numerous complaints, with Robert always finding some excuse or even yelling at me. But today, I wasn't going to give up especially since my parents' birthday was approaching. Robert, my father's birthday is in two months. Can't we invite them to the villa? It's our villa, I stressed, hoping to appeal to him. But his response was the same as always. 
If my parents don't have plans, it'll be the same story. We haven't spent a single night at the villa in the six months since we bought it. Your parents always get priority. But it's our villa and we should come first. Besides, I'm the one paying the mortgage and the down payment. My parents should have their turn too. Today, I'm not giving in. I had enough, I asserted firmly, only to be met with a scowl from Robert. Shut up. That vacation house is only for my parents. I won't allow your parents to use it. I bet that was your plan all along, wasn't it? No wonder you bought it without telling me, he accused. The patience I had clung to shattered in my heart, leaving behind a sense of brokenness. I'll never forgive you, I vowed. Don't think you can act so selfishly without consequences. I challenged my husband. Fine, if that's how it is, I won't hold back anymore. Let's get a divorce. What? You're so petty, he retorted. Well, whatever. My parents appreciate me for buying that vacation home, and my mom can handle the housework. I'll be just fine without you. And if we're divorcing, I won't let you near that vacation house. Is that clear? With a smug look, he crossed his arms triumphantly. I felt foolish for falling for his smooth words, but it was too late for regrets. All that remained was to seek my revenge. In a low voice, I pressed my husband. Are you sure you'll regret this? Because I won't hesitate. Fine, it's settled then. Never shove your face in front of me again, he replied. The next day, I filed for divorce, and it was accepted without any issues. I decided to walk back to my parents' house. A few months later, I received a call from Robert's house. When I answered, he sounded panicked. Um, Kathy, what do you want? We don't have anything to talk about, he said in a frantic tone. In response to my cold response, he yelled back, I try calling your cell phone. Why didn't you answer? Some person claiming to be your lawyer showed up at my house today. This is what you wanted, isn't it? Can you explain it to me properly? Don't you understand? I replied calmly. What's there to understand? He snapped back. The lawyer was right. Since we're divorced, I don't plan on paying the mortgage anymore. If you don't agree, I might sell the vacation house. That's it. But, the vacation house is in both our names. Even after the divorce, isn't it fair for you to keep paying the mortgage? I questioned. My ex-husband seemed at a loss for words. Despite being in both our names, I'm not allowed to use it, right? So why should I keep paying for it? That doesn't make sense to me, I stated calmly. No, it's a joint property, so we should both contribute, I argued. This conversation isn't going anywhere. That's why I consulted a lawyer. If you're going to stick to your stance, I'm ending this call. If you need anything else, talk to my lawyer. I don't have time to deal with this unreasonable behavior. I have my own affairs to attend to. Wait, hold on. I messed up. How about we take turns using the vacation house? I suggested. You mean I keep paying the mortgage and you'll let me use it sometimes, he clarified. I don't have any attachment to that vacation house anymore. I've already bought a new one, he revealed. Wait, what? I exclaimed. Yes, I gifted the vacation house to my parents for their 60th birthday. It's not a million-dollar estate, but a cozy cottage they love. Are we done here? I don't have time for small talk, he said firmly. Wait, please, I interjected. I resigned from my job, he informed me. What? Why? I asked. It was probably my father's doing, right? He's an executive in a top-tier company with many connections. Robert's company president is one of them, he explained. It seems my father had a word with Robert's company president about his behavior towards me. How can we tolerate such behavior in our company? The president must have exclaimed in anger. I don't know all the details, but I heard that Robert chose to resign voluntarily. I'm certain there was some intervention from Robert's company president behind the scenes. Please help me, Robert pleaded tearfully. My co-workers started giving me hostile looks. I made the decision to resign. I found a new job, but the salary is lower than before. I can't manage the mortgage payments on my own. Your father caused all this, right? Then shouldn't he take responsibility and keep paying the mortgage? He's so selfish. I lamented. How much further will he go to satisfy his own desires? I couldn't bear his selfishness any longer. Sure, my father might have played a role in me quitting my job. But you, Robert, are the one who started it all, aren't you? Don't try to twist the narrative to fit your agenda. You're the one in the wrong for tampering with our joint property just to impress your parents. You brought this upon yourself. I never imagined it would come to this. You're facing the consequences of your actions. I hope you suffer in the depths of mortgage hell.
you selfish jerk. I heard his desperate plea, but I hung up the phone without giving it another thought. In the months that followed, I worked with a lawyer and managed to extricate myself from the mortgage for the vacation house. Eventually, Robert couldn't keep up with the mortgage payments alone, and the property ended up being sold due to its decreased value. It appeared that Robert had accumulated debt and was now struggling to make ends meet in a modest apartment. Even his in-laws were shocked by the turn of events, and Robert's parents found themselves facing scrutiny from the community for losing the vacation house they had once bragged about. Meanwhile, I found fulfillment in my role as the vice president of my father's company, leading busy and rewarding days. The happiest moments now come when the three of us, myself, my husband, and our daughter, visit the vacation house on our days off, enjoying moments of relaxation with a cup of coffee.